versatile. Um, and you, today you're joining us to talk about uh, PVC. This is part of the maker movement. People really enjoy uh, these sessions on a state and a national level. Uh, and today's no exception. You're going to be sharing ideas on how to uh, support our complicated kids. So I'm going to stop sharing and invite you to start sharing. Okay, well, first of all, I'm just really glad to be here. Um, I am um, coming to you from Lake Michigan. I live in Holland, Michigan, and um, right across to my house is the lake, and 80 miles past that is Milwaukee. Um, I was sharing with Debbie, sometimes I have a little bit of um, connectivity difficulty, so hang in there if I do. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things first. You're going to get slides, and you're going to get a, a big hand, uh, a group of handouts, but for those of you that have never used PVC, I wanted to do just a live demonstration of what it looks like to cut PVC um, because sometimes people are looking at those things and they're going, how do I do that? And um, it may be too complicated or too expensive or whatever. So I just want to um, explain how to do that. So I have a set of PVC cutters and I, I was telling Debbie, I went out and bought them this morning. I had to go to the hardware store because I did a maker um, day at ATIA this year and I had a whole bunch of my PVC creations out and I had my cutters out and somehow my cutters either didn't get packed up or I hid them somewhere. So I have new cutters and um, some of you were talking about how, and you can hear me rattling around with my PVC on my desk, some of you were talking about having made these um, tablet holders, which are kind of reversible because you can use them either this way with, with the tablet, um, I'm going to fiddle a little bit, tablet sitting here, or you can turn them around the other way and, uh, and have, the tablet, um, have the tablet leaning um, on a, a tablet or a puzzle or whatever leaning on this rack. And the nice thing about it is it's really adjustable. Well, these are easy to put together. They cost about $5. You need um, two feet of PVC. And I'm not gonna cut out the whole thing, but I have my two feet of PVC right here. And here are my PVC cutters. Um, they, they work with a kind of a ratchet and they're noisy, um, but you can't really hurt yourself unless you put them with the PVC. So they're a lot safer than they look. So I'm just ratcheting. I've got my PVC marked where I'm going to cut it, and I'm just ratcheting. And when I get to my little line, I just want to make sure I'm going to cut it evenly. I just ratchet it, and it's done. So here's my little piece of PVC. Not too hard to do, and um, this would be cut out in less than a minute. I had Lauren Enders cutting mine out at Closing the Gap. So while I was presenting, Laura Enders was, was cutting these out and putting these things together. They can go together in minutes. So that's what I love about it. Um, it is practical, versatile, and cheap. It goes together quickly. It's customizable, and um, you can change it the students needs. So I'm going to go ahead and, and screen share so I can tell you a little bit more about some of the other things that I've made with PVC. And um, you can share a little bit about what you've made with PVC. So again, I encourage you to keep your off, not on. And oops, I just got the sign that my internet is unstable in there. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to hope for the best. So here is my presentation. I'm going to go into slideshow mode and I'm going to turn on my closed captioning. I know you probably already have access to them, but I just try to remember to always do it. So we should be set to go. Um, this like it or don't feel like it. Your handouts. Uh, I think Debbie posted um, the link that you all have, but I've also given you a bit.ly for the same. And that bit.ly is at the bottom of your page. It's the HTTPS backslash backslash whatever echo ties and the, um, the uh, uh, QR code also works. So we're just going to um, take a quick peek um, at those handouts. Um, I'm going to uh, minimize this for a second and show you what you're getting. Uh, and you know what? I should have I should have uh, bookmarked this because I didn't do that. So I'm going to have to go over to shared with me and show you what you're getting here, in case you haven't had a chance to peek in it. Uh, 
oh dear, I probably shouldn't even do this. You know what? I think I'm going to wait and do it at the end, but you're going to get a bunch of patterns because I'm afraid I'm going to lose my place. So I'm going to go back to my screen share um, and go back to full size. You can see that I am not real techie. Um, so I always get lost when I try to do too many. And I apologize for this. I wish you were turning off the recording, <laughs> Debbie. So now you should be able to see this, right? Can you see my objectives? Yes. 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 All right. Now I'm going to go to full size there. I'm back where I should have been in the first place. Um, I should have just uh, had that link already open. I'm just some of these things and get them all out of the way. Okay, so the objectives today, um, getting back on, are that you will be able to name or uh, three or more items that can be constructed with PVC, um, that you'll be able to list um, locations where you can find these materials, and that you can recommend uh, three or more do-it-yourself directions and examples. So, Best practices are not one and done. Um, that's my dog out there. Sorry about that. Determining supports and strategies that are least restricted as well as acceptable to the student is all about UDL um, practices. And so we uh, really need to consider the students' needs and practices or strengths and how they change and evolve depending on the environments and the tasks. So dollar store delight yourself, it really depends, and it depends on the student and what areas that are challenging to them and what strengths can be used to bridge those deficits, the environments, the tasks, and the tools. And this is all based, of course, on the set framework, and we all um, just want to take a moment for remembering the, the huge contributions that Joy Zabala has given us and um, how we are all better for the input she has provided us and the things that she's told us about. So the set framework documents at the bottom of your slides can be um, um, uh, clicked on and they open right up into the documents that are on her um, website, which continues to be maintained by the quiet leadership. So starting with what you've got, or as Carol Mus Caroline Musselwhite has said, dance with the one who brought you, doesn't mean that's where we'll end up. And my point is that with PVC, you have the opportunity to create prototypes of something that may turn into to something that's going to be entirely different um, that, than what you started out with. But what's exciting about it is that you can make your mistakes, you can seek input from your teams because it's all about feature matching and feature matching doesn't occur in a vacuum. Feature matching requires um, a team approach in order to do it. And so through that feature matching, you can get the just right challenge and you can get the just right intervention. So um, Judy Sweeney, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Judy Sweeney, but Judy Sweeney um, uh, created a, a term called the easy tools. And um, those of you that have heard me speak before has heard me talk about the easy tools. The easy tools mean that there's economy of, of time and, and cost. Um, there's additional or um, adapted use of familiar tools. Um, there's, uh, they include standards that are already a part of what must be taught or what the goals are for that particular child or student. And then turning it over to the person or the caregivers and letting them know the tool is theirs. It's not something that gets pulled out when the therapist is there. It's something that's being used all the time and being used because it's valuable to the person who's using it. So I know that all of us who are providing related services sometimes feel like a, su a supply closet. Um, people come to you and they say, oh, you know, I need a slant board or I need raised line paper or I need this or that or the other thing. Um, and um, our job is to really empower anybody who is working with individuals to make sure that they know how to provide those supports for themselves. Um, and I just realized my closed captioning was off, so I'm going to put it back on, sorry. Um, so uh, 
in this example, we see a slant board. And those examples, uh, the example of the slant board is a $35 thing from a catalog versus a little notebook um, that you can turn into a slant board. You can slap some rubber made down so it doesn't wiggle around. Um, you can slide things into the, the clear plastic cover so that they have um, some visuals to support them. So there's a lot of things that we can do by using what we've got. And, and that's so important to all of us. So we want to keep tools in our toolkit easy. It's not to say that we're not going to use um, high-tech tech technology. It's not to say that we're not going to use switches or eye gaze frames or dynamic screen devices or those other things. But we want to maybe start with something easy because that's going to give us an idea of what's going to work and what the buy-in is going to be. Um, it's also so much more adaptable. When I was starting out, I started out in 1975, and um, you know it was hard to find um, adaptive equipment back then. And so I made a lot of my equipment. I had a, a student that was learning to use a power chair, but she wasn't positioned well. So a notebook went under her, her seat in order to get her hips back in a seat. And a coffee can bent, went between her knees to abduct her a little bit more so she could get into a good position. And then um, a tuna fish can went on top of her joystick because she couldn't really handle the joystick. And then a helmet went on her head with a little rod that went down into the tuna fish can can, and all of a sudden she could run the chair because we'd switched where the, the controls were, we'd switched the parameters of the control, we'd switched the access points, and we had changed her positioning. So it's all about that individualization, and I'm sure it was really hard to picture in your head, but it worked for her, and then that prototype turned into a custom um, insert for her chair and a custom control because there was so much that wasn't there when I started practicing. And uh, you all are lucky that you're practicing now. Why do it yourself? Why not? It's less expensive and less isolating when you're, when you're using ordinary and easily found materials. And those of you that um, had to provide virtual services during COVID, you know that our kids went home without a lot of the things that they had in school. Um, a lot of the positioning equipment, a lot of the specialized switches and everything else were in the classroom and they didn't necessarily go home with the child. And so uh, all of us were caught off guard and all of us, tended to have to scramble and we all had to start using our parents much more than we probably used them before as uh, co-conspirators in kind of coming up with the kinds of things that the students needed in order to work well virtually. And in having those conversations, I'm sure a lot of you realize that you could coach parents into finding things around their house that could support their kids. And it was probably very empowering. So some of the other reasons why we might want to do it yourself, not all the time, but as a continuum, because there's always those situations where um, the thing that plugs in or turns on or is charged isn't there. So having some of those other things as a backup is really important. So as, as uh, I've talked about, it's less expensive, it's fast and easy, it's customizable. Um, Everybody who's involved with that um, user can play an active role in the feature matching, um, and it's empowering. So we're going to talk now a little bit about PVC. This is an old book, and you have it in your resources. It's the Practical, Versatile, and Cheap Assistive Technology Supports. And the last edition was, believe it or not, in 2005. But these, um, these patterns still resonate. And you're going to see a number of the patterns because I put them all. I, I got the book um, uh, years and years and years ago. But I went through it and put every design together. And a lot of them are still perfect for um, some of the basic needs that um, I have had with the students with whom I've worked. There's also some other resources that I've, I've put in your resource folder. Um, including some, um, some patterns from Instructables. Um, there's a, uh, a pattern for the um, alternative pencils from UNC. Um, and there's some things from um, uh, the Nevada, um, uh, I always go blank on the whole name, but it's for uh, individuals with sensory differences. And so you'll see that there's a, a number of resources collected and I would appreciate any resources that you can send me or send Deb actually, because she has access to the folder to slip in that folder so that you end up with a whole bunch of patterns of different things that you can make. 
Um, so what is PVC? Um, it's polyvinyl chloride and it's a resin and it's lightweight. Um, I'm not gonna go through all the chemical stuff about it, but um, it's really easy to use. I, I think of it as sort of like a tinker toy for assistive technology providers. It's versatile. You can get it anywhere. You can get it in, in different lengths and different diameters, depending on what you're going to make. And it's inexpensive. Um, most of the things that I've made are less than $30. And the things that I've made that have been $30 have been pretty complex and required a lot of the, the little joints. And I'll talk a little bit more about how much those cost in a minute. So how cheap? Um, depending on where you are, I found that in, in Holland right now, I can get a 10 foot length of PVC for under $4. But um, the standard is about four to $5 for a 10 foot length. Um, and I use, I tend to use the half inch pipe, the, um, the three quarter inch and the, the inch pipe is a lot more durable. And for those of you that might be making walkers or crawlers or things like that, um, they would probably want to get the more durable um, and the, the thicker lengths. Um, but for my prototypes and for a lot of the things that I'm making that are more stabilizers and things like that, I can get away quite well with the one half inch pipe. Um, some of the different prices for the connectors are 95 cents for the T-shape, 54 cents for the elbow shape, 67 cents for the caps. You don't really have to use the caps except sometimes PVC cuts a little rough and that's just a, a protective thing. And it gives you something extra to use Velcro with because typically when I use my PVC creations, I Velcro them onto a piece of dollar store um, uh, uh, carpeting. So it gives them additional stabilization and um, me the, the advantage of, of uh, being able to position them and move them around and get them right where I want them. Um, the, um, the picture at the top right hand um, is uh, the PVC pipes when you can buy them in bulk. And today when I went to pick up my new cutters, I picked up a bucket of PVC elbows and by buying the bucket of 60, which is like the construction size bucket for the construction, it's not that big, but it's for contractors. Um, it was 37 cents. So about 50, I, say, I saved almost 50% by buying them in bulk. And uh, um, so that's a good way of doing it rather than piecing it out. So um, this information, the environmental- I don't know if you saw the message from Mary Ellen. She wondered, do you typically use the half inch size? Yes, Mary Ellen, I typically use the half inch size as, as I um, was mentioning for prototypes number one and number two for lightweight things. Um, if I were going to make more um, uh, things that I was sure of, I would probably use the heavier and I would also cement them together. But I keep most of my PVC open so I can keep taking it apart and putting it together and trialing it in the different sizes and the different heights and everything else. Um, but um, for my permanent things, I would use, um, there's a, a PVC cement that you can purchase, um, or I would buy the banded uh, PVC because you can also buy um, the twist on type. Um, the, the joints that I use are called slip joints. So uh, the PVC slides in and out of the, um, of the joint. So you can just pull it out, but there's also PVC threaded um, joints that cost more and you can thread the PVC on and then they don't come apart. So some of these, uh, and I hope I answered your question if I didn't just call out. And Debbie, thank you for uh, monitoring the chat. I've got so many things open on my uh, screen. Well, that that's quite all right. And Mary Ellen had one more question about where, yes, can Mary we buy, where can we buy your book? So if you just want to share a link with us down the line or, or we can oh, look it up online. Oh, you're not going to buy my you're not going to buy my book. The book is in your folder. It is that 2005 PVC and it's in your resource folder. And Yay. Uh, if I were more with it and maybe Deb, we can screen share at the end and you can show them the folder because for some reason I, it's because it's shared with me and because I'm a little hyper about presenting and I get kind of uh, um, distracted, I couldn't open that folder quickly enough. So maybe right at the end, we can open the resource folder that is um, the folder with the handouts. Oh, right. We'll have it ready to go. I can show you that you have it all set for you. Um, so anyhow, some of the environmental supports, and this information is right from um, um, 
two OTs. Uh, it was Sue Mistret and um, Shelly Lane. This was back in the 80s, I believe. Um, they had um, an IDEA grant and it was called Let's Participate. And um, it was for toys and for um, positioners for young children. And they talked about some of the environmental supports that young children need in order to participate. And they broke it up into positioners. And you can see some of the examples of positioners, stabilizers, confiners, attachers, highlighters, extenders, and simplifiers. And so I took this, um, this uh, um, outline of what those are, and I gave you some examples, but I'm really concentrating on some of the positioners you can make out of PVC, some of the stabilizers you can make out of PVC, some of the confiners, et cetera. But you can see these other materials, and, and you have heard me in the past or talking about play have seen me um, provide examples of each of these using various materials. So um, I'm just going to go on and, and talk about environmental supports right off the bat. So you have the pattern for the laptop um, holder on the left. In fact, that's what my laptop is sitting on right now, um, so that you can tilt the screen up high enough so that you're looking at it at an eye level and it's ergonomically supportive. And um, that's just uh, uh, six elbow joints, and I think I want to say 36 inches of PVC. I'm probably off there, but you've got the pattern in your handout. The, T, the PVC laptop table on the right-hand side of the slide, that live, it'll take you to that pattern. And then again, that adjustability of that laptop table, if you need it taller or shorter, you just cut your PVC accordingly. So a lot of these measurements are based on what you want them to be. Um, you can put it together exactly the first time, but after that, it's really how it works best for you. Do you need a short table? Do you need a tall table? And um, anywhere in between. So what do you think of this as a positioner? This is a laundry bag, and it has a piece of PV pipe pushed through the little slots on either side, and it's uh, the PVC pipe is covered with a Anybody ever use a laundry basket for positioning a young child? Um, and I don't see the chat. So if you've said yes, um, is there anybody saying yes? I, and you did cut out just a bit during that, but I think you said that that is a pool noodle on top of the, the PVC, correct? It is. It's a pool noodle to kind of uh, cushion the PVC. And I was asking whether anybody's made this. And what Kelly that... Trant said, yes, she has. And Kelly, does it work for you? D does it work well? I've not used it with the pool noodle, but that is something that I've used um, just for practicing sitting balance. Okay, great. I'm going to show you another slide on the next one. The point and of Brandy the said that she uses pillows or towel rolls sometimes. So this is a little bit different setup. Yes, it's a different setup. And the reason um, being is that PVC is kind of designed to go right there at the hip flex, flex flexors to hold those hips back into place. So that kind of stabilizes it. And it's not going to shift around like a, a pillow will because it's it's placed specifically in those little slots. Um, and so here is another example. This one isn't PVC, um, but you'll get the idea of another option you would have. Um, so this one um, is, uh, the source is craftymorning.com. And this is an actual um, support that was created for a child. And the mother talks about it um, in a about how she uh, was, the child was needing to work on sitting balance and she was working with the OT and the PT and um, she couldn't find a position that was comfortable for her child. So she went ahead and designed this herself and she used zip ties and a series of pool noodles, as you can see, that really cushioned that child in that, um, in that play space. And then she provided that child something to do. And, and clearly the child is having a good time if you look at, the um, the picture at the at the top right hand, so she wasn't resisting that position. So again, while we're specifically going to be talking about PVC in the next several slides, I did want to show you a, a, a pool noodle option because we are going to talk a tiny bit about pool noodles right at the end too. And I often use them in conjunction with PVC. So. 
we're going to talk now about those stabilizers. We talked about positioning. Now we're going to talk about some of the stabilizers that you can do with PVC. So um, this is a Melissa du and Doug toy on the left-hand side. It's one of those magnetic dress-up dolls, but you can imagine a, a child who has a little bit of difficulty with their motor pad might be knocking the doll over and, and having difficulty picking up some of those items or not having them at eye level, not being able to bring up to their eyes or bring their, their head down to view the activity because of postural instability. So on the right-hand side is a PBT, PVC tilting eye gaze frame, and I'm going to show you how to make that in a few slides. Um, that um, tilting eye gaze frame can be used with cookie sheets and with puzzles and with um, uh, a carpet square from the dollar store um, as, as a, a holder for all sorts of different things. The beauty of the, um, the tilting eye gaze um, frame that, that I used with this uh, cookie sheet is that it's got like a, a higher side and a lower side that you'll see in a few slides. And so someone who is side lying or lying on their back or, um, or um, of a different stature, you can always get that PVC frame in the right height so they're at, at eye level wherever they are. Um, not only from the, the height of the sidebars, but from the way that you tilt the actual um, device. And so you have a pattern for making that tilting eye gaze frame. And I've just showed you a couple of ways that you can do it. So this is another PVC pipe toy stabilizer. This idea at ATIA years ago. Um, I just love this thing on the left. It's a spinner, a, a, a clear plastic um, pretzel barrel that the kind that you get at Costco and you eat all the pretzels or the cheese puffs or whatever and then you empty it out and um, you cut a hole in the top and in the bottom and what I use for my holes is um, I buy a very inexpensive um, practical versatile and cheap a very cheap um, soldering iron from Harbor Freight they cost about three and a half bucks and you can melt plastic with them so I just melt until I get the, the right size diameter to slide the PVC through the hole. So the, the beauty of this spinner on the, on the left-hand side is the fact that you can change out the attributes. So, so right now I have the, the colored eggs in because spring season is coming up. And, and um, so if you go into the classroom, you might see some of these signs of spring. But if the kids took a nature walk, you could fill it with pine, uh, a pine cone. If the kids um, uh, collected leaves in the fall, you could fill it with leaves. In, uh, in the winter, you can put uh, fun uh, colored lights or ornaments. Um, uh, my connection is unstable. Can you hear me again? Did I go out and in? Uh, you've been wavering a little bit, but I still hear you just fine, friend. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hopefully the, um, the um, closed caption will, will pick up on my hiccups there. So anyway, um, I provided these to a lot of my um, classrooms in the in the um, in the preschool uh, who had kids with with uh, complex bodies because the spinner allowed them to bat around and to explore those toys. Um, and then I got smart and started running PVC workshops so that the teachers could make their own. The plate on uh, the the. Uh, stabilizer on the right hand side is another um, which uh, places like a T-bar um, on top of a stabilized platform. And again, I would anchor those onto a carpet square so they really felt uh, stayed still when someone was was uh, manipulated. Those are um, plates from the dollar store. Um, that items that the kids might be interested in spinning and exploring. And I just felt like puzzle pieces, a little, a little brightly colored uh, puzzle pieces. You could put cars on them. You could put anything that you wanted on them, but they, they work to spin and children can explore them with, without having to have precise hand movements. So here again is our PVC holder that a number of you have made, the tablet holders. And so it not only holds a tablet, but it can hold a puzzle or a book or anything that you really want it to hold. Um, and uh, again, I also anchor those on carpet squares so they don't slide around if somebody's pushing on the puzzle. Here's um, a PVC sensory table, and these are very easy to put together. Um, the directions um, for the do-it-yourself sensory table are right there on the screen. If you click on that, um, it'll take you right 
right to the um, the pattern. Um, I would suggest you make your own pattern because it depends on whether what size tub you want. I got the I think these are um, I want to say they're uh, eighteen by twenty four tubs. Um, I put it together, and the nice thing about it is the tubs go right inside. You can put whatever you want. You can put water inside. You can put uh, um, anything you'd put in a sensory table inside. But the beauty of them is that you can take them apart, and you can store everything in the tub. So you can carry them around. So you can have kind of a kit of different things that you can make with PVC and to model for um, educators or parents. Um, and um, then you can tuck it in your trunk and it doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, there are wonderful, wonderful websites. I should have um, included them, but since I didn't, I'm just gonna tell you, uh, if you do a, a search in your browser, uh, sensory table activities, you will find all sorts of ideas on what to put in and also wonderful visuals if you're working on speech and language or if you're working on um, visual perception or if you're working on fine motor all sorts of ideas and visuals to go along with the activities like i spy games and things like that that describe the uh, the attributes of what's in the sensory table and then the child has to root around and find them even checklists that they can check out um, I know that you're going to hear from Beth Post with Lesson Picks, and they have wonderful ideas on, on checklists and things like that that you can incorporate into, um, into sensory tables and, and activities. So the child is sort of in charge and, and kind of can organize what they're looking for and what they're doing. So here's the sensory table storage. It's all tucked in there. And as you can see, I've got all my lengths of pipe and there's still room to put at least five or six different other um, PVC um, tools that, that I've used like the tablet holder, like the, um, like the Big Mac holder and some various hand tools that kids can use to help with their grasp. Here's some PVC um, pipe attachers, and I think a, a couple of you mentioned them in the chat. Um, there is uh, There are directions on how to make a toy bar um, at the top right-hand side of your screen. If you click on the link, it's live. That takes you to Paths to Literacy. And one of the things that they had suggested, so you see that on the picture on the left, is to use pool noodles to separate out each of those items. <coughs> excuse me, because they tend to slide together sometimes when, when the children are manipulating them. And um, they recommend it, especially for kids with low vision, that you have them um, separated out so they can distinguish one object from another and really examine one object at, the, at a time in terms of the attributes. And I think I mentioned to those of you that were online kind of before we started formally, that uh, those items that I have hanging there um, are from the Dollar Tree. They're, they're foam luggage tags, and they're hanging from two curtain, curtain rings, also purchased from the Dollar Tree. So it's not a very costly activity. You can change out the attributes. You can also make um, story, um, like a story box, but there are story hangers um, that tell the the story by hanging beanie babies or different icons or, or objects that represent different aspects of a story when you're reading to a child. So here is um, a confiner, and this is a PVC con confiner. This this um, this joint is um, not a 90 degree joint. It's it's um, it's uh, less. Uh, it's a 45 degree joint, I think it is. Anyway, um, you can make it of any size. It's sort of like a, a angular hula hoop, but it works to either confine toys inside or you can even confine the child inside for a boundary. Um, I have it Velcroed on a piece of carpet square. And then again, I can put items inside like uh, cars and puzzle pieces and things like that. And that's where they belong inside the corral. So here are some examples of PVC extenders. Just the T-bar at the lower left-hand side of your screen is just the T-joint, um, uh, 67 cents, something like that. But in the one-inch um, size joint, it's the perfect diameter um, to fit a, a glue stick in. So the, the, um, the T part of the joint is something extra to grasp onto, and then you've got something to hold the glue stick into place. Um, you'll see that uh, there are um, some other angled uh, PVC tools that have been designed in order for them to be, um, you, can, you can change the angle of the direction 
of where the distal part of the PVC, they grip um, on the, the kind of like the whisper phone shaped part of the, of the tool. And then the distal part of the tool can be angled. So if they have odd um, or odd is not the right word, if they have differing um, motor patterns and they have difficulty angling the tool, like the writing tool or the paintbrush right towards the surface, uh, you can help them angle um, the tool that they're grasping by angling the end of the, the tool. And I hope that makes sense to you. So here's an example, of, or the, here's how to make that particular versatile adapted tool holder. So you've got the exact measurements there. Um, and then again, if the tool is too small to fit uh, snugly into the PVC, so see PVC holder, you can add Rubbermaid shelf liner again, purchased at the Dollar Tree to build up the tool, wrap it in wiki sticks or insert some Velcro into the, the um, tube part of the PVC and um, um, add Velcro to the tool you're securing. So here's what it looks like in use. And as you can see from the child grasping it, you could angle it. So if the child were working on a flat plane or a vertical plane and the tool wasn't matching where their, their aim was, you could change the angle of the, the distal part of the tool. So here's um, a PVC um, extender to make it longer. So if they can grab the T part, um, the, the top part of the, of the tool, you can make it as long or as short as they need in order to reach like the interactive whiteboard or whatever they were trying to do, paint on an easel or, um, or push something even on the floor if they were playing a game in PE. Um, it just makes a, a, a better uh, grasping surface for the student. And again, that's what it looks like with, with the uh, glue stick in it. So here's some extenders that you can add to puzzle pieces. Again, my T bar, the T bars are my favorite because they're easy to hold. And so these are just uh, like you see, uh, Melissa and Doug, the cookie activity. Um, there's Velcro on the bottom of the um, of the cookie shapes, and there's Velcro on the bottom of the cookie sheet, and you can move those around with the with the handles. So this is um, an eye gaze extender, and this pattern is um, from a blog, uh, Little Miss Kimberly, I think is her name. And uh, she made this um, kind of a, an eye gaze frame that is just basically a very T-bar. And the child has a, a, an opportunity to either select from an object or a photograph um, that is fastened either at the two distal ends on the end caps or in the middle on the T-joint um, to make a, a, a choice with their eyes. So you can also use PVC for literacy supports. Um, the, uh, the PVC frame on the left, you have the pattern in your uh, resource folder, um, and that is uh, for doing some alternative pencil writing. Um, that's the same um, idea with the frame in the middle. Um, and the frame on the right-hand side is the same frame that was used for the toy spinner. And those are gigantic hex nuts that you can get at the hardware store. And you can put different letters on the hex nuts and so they can practice their spelling. You can maybe just put three letters at a time and they can work on word families. And then you can extend it up to various spelling words that the child can spin and work with the PVC frame. And if you're not familiar with alternative pencils, um, this website, uh, uh, the website will take you to, uh, the, the link will take you, I'm going to hold my breath and see if I can take you there and go back. Okay, this will take you to um, uh, the alternative pencil site from the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies. As you see when I scroll down, it's got these different patterns, it's got these different um, um, uh, configurations, even a braille alphabet flip chart, and then all of these have the directions for these specific flip charts, as well as the directions for the eye gaze frame. So we'll click into here real quick, hold our breath. Oops, I opened it twice. So you can see that you get the pattern, but you also get all the letters that you place into the pattern. So pretty if you're doing, um, if you're doing alternative pencils. So we'll go back to this. And now straight from this practical, versatile and cheap 
assistive technology supports. Um, these are um, some of the different PVC creations that are right from the book and with the page numbers. So here's your small switch stand. There's the, the directions, uh, and the directions are, are more detailed than just the diagram. Um, but this is what the finished product looks like. So it holds a little Mac. And uh, uh, Michelle Lang just did a, a series of videos for, I think, assistive wear on um, positioning switches. And sometimes we forget that just because we can bring our hand down and activate a switch doesn't mean our kids can. And so I, what I like about this positioning is it allows for a side sweep this is the switch. So there's no lifting of the hand at all or to either activate or to release. It's just a, a sweep. And hopefully if they can do a, a horizontal sweep, they, they can move their hands back and forth so that they can release the switch. So here's a sense relation stand. Um, this is page 22. Again, I've separated those beads. They're uh, Mardi Gras beads from the Dollar Tree. Um, and I've separated them with pool noodles. And it's easy enough to cut those pool noodles in one to two inch um, uh, uh, diameter uh, uh, coins and then cut a slit in them. So they, um, they just place right over the PVC pipe. So this is a PVC number line. Um, this is from page 40. And this is, um, everything is made with one inch or one half inch PVC and one half inch joints, except for the counters. And those counters are one inch PVC. So they slide right onto the, um, to the PVC frame. And they're black and white because I used um, electrical tape to, to alternate the colors there. And um, the orange is also um, duct tape so that they can see the, the two ends of the, of the counting frame. And so they move the, the, um, the coins from one side to the other to, to count um, either in, in singles or in, in uh, um, uh, groups of two. Does that make sense? So the bigger PVC gets strung on the smaller diameter PVC. So here's that tilting eye gaze frame I talked about. And as you can see um, from the diagram, you can't see exactly from the cookie sheet because the cookie sheet is hiding, but um, one end of the square that's in the middle of the eye gaze frame is um, there's, a, there's a three inch um, lengths of PVC and the other um, side, the top side has seven inches of PVC. Um, that form that square that rotates. So you can imagine when you rotate the seven inch to the down, it's closer to the ground. And when the seven inches is um, at the top, there's more distance between the ground and the frame. And so the uh, sheet on the right is with the seven inches in the down position so that the three inch is at the top position, cookie sheet is along the top, if that makes sense. So here's an auditory feedback phone, a whisper phone out of PVC. And then um, in talking about play, um, there's a mom blog on adaptations and using PVC for a bowling ramp she's made for her child. So there's, if you start to, to make searches of PVC pipe, you'll find amazing um, things that people have created. And especially the parents, they're the ones that, that um, are the anchor of, for a lot of these creations that I found. Um, I think Jerry age. said, I think Jerry said that he made uh, a bowling ramp, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry, but uh, does yours look like this? There's a couple of different designs. I don't know what Jerry said, but there's a couple of different designs. There's a T-frame um, bowling ramp too. Um, and there's also, um, there's a lot of people that are doing things with, um, with the PVC as a frame and they're putting hair dryers on them and they're having things, leaves blowing and things like that. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, uh, adaptive PE guy that does tweets, that, that that's on Twitter that does tweets. I'm from the, I do the Twitter generation, as you can say, as you can see, but um, I think it's Longview Entry School, the adaptive PE teacher there has amazing things and a lot of the, the things that he's created incorporate PVC pipe. And I, I like the idea the bowling ramp, uh, bowling pins also have bells on them to provide some auditory feedback. 
Um, I know that most of you have probably heard of Go Baby Go, and you can see with this Go Baby Go car, um, PVC is a standard um, uh, material that is used on, on most of the of the uh, the cars, either as frames or as handles. That the handle at the at the left hand side of the picture is clearly an extender, and then the handles on the right hand side are for the child to lean forward and stabilize. So there's a lot of different things and a lot of different configurations you can make to make um, these uh, motorized cars um, switch accessible and then also um, uh, provide the positioning cage for the child with PVC and pool noodles and, and those foam um, paddle boards and things like that. If you're not familiar with Go Baby Go, and I know that there's so, several active groups up your way, Deb, um, you can click on those links and they'll take you to um, Cole Galloway's site. Um, and there's also the Go Baby Go manual out of the University of Delaware. And we uh, we do partner with Go Baby Go and they uh, we co-partnered uh, to do, co-sponsored a series of seven uh, workshops around the state for builder. Uh, and one of them I think is either starts today or tomorrow, but they are doing a series. And we just added some maker sessions from uh, Bethany uh, are gonna be appearing on our uh, schedule on Wednesday. I I saw that. I want to. I want to attend those. Um, this is <laughs> this is more complex, but these are do-it-yourself sports equipment videos from a um, adaptive PE teacher from Prince George County in Maryland, and this takes you to her YouTube channel, and uh, she introduces you to these different things. She's got a a uh, striking um, extender, a uh, bow and arrow, an archery stand, et cetera, all made um, in part with PVC. And these are all adapted equipment. Um, they're pretty much geared towards, except for the bowling ramp, pretty much geared towards middle to high school. But um, there's some really good ideas, uh, things that could possibly be shared with your adaptive PE teacher. So for those of us that have fidgeting kids in our classroom, this is a PVC foot fidget and the directions um, for the foot swing um, are from Miss Jamie OT and uh, they're right there. Um, and they don't really require anything. Desks they have at your school. You've used screw holes underneath the desk and you've attached them with, um, with uh, what are those things called? The plastic, uh, uh, I'm going blank. Zip ties. Uh, Zip ties. Zip ties. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm listening to my dog barking and thinking what a disruption. My husband was supposed to get the dog out of the house and I think he's left the house himself. He got he got out of the house. But anyhow, yes, there are dogs and there. pets are welcome. We're used to that now. Thank you. That's Jack Dougal McFarland for those of you that haven't met him. Um, so anyhow, they're attached with zip ties and then the child can just swing that um, foot fidget back and forth to get a little bit of sensory input. Um, for more ideas on PVC, there's always Therese Wilcombe's book, uh, as she has a whole section on PVC. And she talks a lot about the makeup of PVC, some of the other tools that you can use, because she goes really into depth about the, the, um, the cements and things as well. Um, and you can see she's even made an Instamorph uh, PVC cutter stabilizer. Um, it's this little picture right in the center. You can see the PVC um, a tool itself, but she's also stabilized it. So for people that have difficulty, I don't know if you can see my little face up there, um, squeezing this shut, um, it, uh, it stabilizes the bottom part of it. So all you have to do is press down on it. So uh, Teresa's always thinking. And Teresa's so, book, that book you were just mentioning is uh, going to be or is available in our loan library through OTAP. Oh, and FYI. it's wonderful. And I don't know if you all realize that Teresa doesn't make a buck on these. These um, are donated back to the, I think it's um, to the AT Act in New Hampshire. I don't remember exactly. The funding goes back into, um, into creating things for people with disabilities. So here's today's demos. I've already told you what these look like, but I'm going to show you how quickly they go together in a um, series of slides. So for the eye gaze frame, and these, these are all the directions, you'll find them in other places too. I'm not going to go into them, but that's what all the, um, the materials look like when they're, when they're all put together. And it's telling you how many joints you need. 
So you start at the top and you can work your way down. So I have elbow joints, two elbow joints at the top with that um, larger length, the, the, um, the 12 inch length of PVC pipe. And then um, smaller lengths. And then there's a, the second T joint and another smaller length. And then the larger length again. So these, remember, these are the three inch lengths that we talked about before. These are the seven inch lengths. These are the, this is a 12 inch length. So I've added the sides. And then the next thing is going to come is the elbows at either side. Oh, nope. Bottom of the frame. So there we have our, um, our, four elbows that that uh, shape the, the square, but we cut the, the square in half, or not in half, in a seven inch length and a, uh, a 10 inch, uh, a three inch length, and then attached them with, attached them with a T-joint that goes out to the part that makes it able to be adjustable. So then there's our vertical supports, and then there's our assembled supports. So those are our legs, and then the legs get turned out So here's the PVC uh, spinner. Here's how this goes together. This is, uh, you need seven and a half feet of PVC. So not quite the 10 foot length that you'll get. Uh, and this is um, our lengths here, the 18 inch, the 10 inch, the four inch, and the six elbows and the, and the two T joints. So this is from Kirkland. So this is Costco. I think this was a nut jar. Um, it's, it's not the same as the pretzel jar. You can use any size jar you want and you can adjust the, the width of your, um, your spinner accordingly too. Um, and as I said, I use a, an inexpensive soldering iron from Harbor Freight to melt the hole. There's the base of the spinner. It's basically a rectangle formed with the uh, four elbow joints and the, the T joints. There's the uprights. And then again, place small items of interest in the plastic jar, screw on the lid, and then run the top part, which in, in this case was 18 inches, but you could make it any size you want and add the elbow joints. And there you have the spinner. And as you can see, um, there's a difference between the spinner that I showed you in the other picture and this one. This one's taller, so a child can be kneeling or they can be sitting in a chair and using as opposed to having it on a tray top or on the floor. So this is the versatile tablet holder. I'm, I'm going to ask. I have there was a question I don't want to lose here. Uh, Joanne okay. asked, um, "Is the adaptive PE PVC um, it, the link, or, or is that in the um, resources, or is that another uh, place that you referred people to for more?" The adaptive PE. The adaptive PE link is right on the slides. So the, the, okay. with, the, with the YouTube videos, yeah, it's right on the slides. When they click on the, on the um, I use all descriptive links. So anytime you see an underline, that means yes. that when you go to your PDF copy of my slides, it'll take you right to that site. Okay, great. Thank you. It's in your resources, Joanne. We can post the link to the handouts again if anybody needs those. Thank so you, this Judy. Is, Oh, of course. So this is that versatile ha tablet holder that uh, we've we've kind of beat the dead horse on this one because we've talked about it several times. But this is how to how quickly it goes together. So those are your links. It's approximately two feet of PVC. So what's about the versatility? We've already talked about what it does. It's a tablet holder, right? Well, there's so much more. Same lengths. This is this is the cut on the left is is the lengths for the tablet holder. But if I only use the four inch length, or I could use the three and a half inch length, um, and put the two elbow joints, I've got a whisper foam. Now, if I only use um, one of the four inch lengths and one of the three inch lengths and two of the T bars and one elbow, I've got a switch stand. If I only use a couple of the short lengths and one of the longer lengths and a T-bar, I've got a T-bar holder. And I've also got an adjustable holder. So I've got a lot of different things I can make from that same tablet holder cut. And there's the tablet holder. So I think it's very versatile. But here's some other PVC uh, materials, pool noodles. And by what I mean by is they're versatile 
and they're cheap. They're practical, versatile, and cheap. So this is just PVCs and those inexpensive beach chairs and some zip ties um, can turn into um, a, a comfortable positioning chair for a child. And you can even cut the legs down of these little plastic chairs so that they their feet can touch the floor. Or you can put in a um, lid box and put the front legs into those holes and give them a little foot platform so they have something to push off. I really like even there's a little bit of an abduction post there on the um, blue chair to keep those knees apart and help the kids stay into the chair. So no time for some of these projects. How about a maker club project to help put these things together? And that's what we did in Loudoun County. Um, we had our, our our maker club um, make PVC um, tablet holders. So when we started distributing iPads with uh, Lamp Words for Life, every kid that got the iPad got a tablet holder. Um, and then we started running workshops where people could make their own. We also did um, those PVC, like the T-bar and the Versatile holder as part of an art tool kit that I've presented on for you guys before. And uh, the, um, the Maker Club put all of those together. They put together 88 art kits for that year of art teachers. So um, there is a, um, I think it's from TheraPro, um, put out an art called Pool Noodles as Assistive Technology. I've got it linked at the bottom. So here's how those descriptive links work. If I click on this underlined thing, it's gonna take us to that site. So this site, yes, yeah, it's the TheraBlog from TheraPro. And um, so all these ideas are taken from the, the TheraBlog um, of using pool noodles as assistive technology. So you see um, for the physical access, using them as corners on desks, using them for sitting, and we saw that basket, I'm um, using them supports it or a stroller. You also saw them in those little plastic chairs holding utensils um, sliced open on the edge of a table again for a bumper uh, and I'm using as a footrest border and uh, as a bungee cord inside and to wrap around a chair as a foot fidget. You can also use pool noodles as ball stabilizers. So those of you that go into the classrooms and the kids are sitting on balls and they're um, kind of rolling all over the place. Um, you can um, make a ring out of a, pe uh, out of a pool noodle and tape it together and then the ball fits in there. You, here's a, an example of the pool noodle lumbar roll. And this was from a blog called Use Your Noodle and it was a parent's blog about all the different things that they did to stabilize, to help stabilize their child um, who had significant uh, motor uh, differences. And so you'll see, if you go to that blog, you'll see the stroller inserts, the, um, the lumbar uh, wedge, some of the different things that they've created with pool noodles to support their child. And again, because of the um, movable nature of this, you can reposition these and move them in, in different places. They're not permanently attached anywhere. So um, you can adjust as needed. Um, Clearly, pool noodle pencil grip with we've got the rubber made uh, shelf liner and a cut pool noodle and a marker. Um, pool noodles for visual differences, you can use them as card holders, uh, raised border to a book stand. Um, you can put them as bumpers on those uh, um, PVC tablets that, that you've made, tablet holders that you've made. So you've got some different ideas on, on this slide on different things you can do for visual differences. Uh, Poodles for executive function, you can wrap around the child to create a bubble zone for teaching personal space. You can attach a chair to kick for increased focus or use as a hand fidget, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these things are in your um, in that resource folder or not in the resource folder, excuse me, on that link that I showed you several slides back. This is from Understood, which I just love. Six low cost ways to create a sensory friendly chair. And you can see that uh, um, a couple of them have been made with, with pool noodles. So these are just practical, versatile and cheap solutions, even though it's not the um, poly whatever that uh, PVC pipe is made of. Again, even if a hand fidget, um, a foot fidget, a sensory chair, I've never built this one because it's really not very cost effective, but it's really cool when you look at it. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, well, you'll see um, when you pull the directions, the directions are right here uh, at the bottom of the slide um, if you really wanted to challenge, um, but they're, they're colorful and they're cool looking and it could be a, a fun classroom project. 
And we have about six minutes left. Perfect, because I'm right to the end of the slides. Finally, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the things that I buy at the Dollar Tree. And you can get pool noodles at the Dollar Tree um, on occasion, seasonally. They just had the red ones and the fuchsia ones for, um, for Valentine's Day, and I bought everything they had. The things that I buy at the Dollar Tree are rug, um, a little uh, And you're kind of frozen, Judy. But it takes you to $117 um, dollar store hacks for the classroom. Okay, um, and you froze just a, a minute. So where like should that. easy tools live without ownership? People don't value the tools as they should. And that applies to both students and teachers. It makes much more sense for the tools to live in the classrooms or the environments in which they are needed so that they're available for instant use. So I am done. Remember, just because it's do-it-yourself doesn't mean it's making do. So do you have any questions for me? Wow. <laughs> uh, there were In that last explanation, you had just a moment where you cut out, but I don't think we missed anything. Uh, and I think that all of the resources that folks will need are in the folder. Uh, you always give us such a treasure trove of um, Okay, it's such a treasure trove of resources uh, that folks can go back to. The recording will be posted for that as well. Uh, we've got a request to post the handouts again one more time. And, uh, you know, usually we will end with uh, talking about application to students and uh, case studies. And so when we look at these, you shared a lot of things that are actually being used with students as solutions. So here's your case study. But we also want to invite anybody to to share with us um, their feedback. I'm seeing lots of it in the chat. And um, if you wanted to stop sharing your screen, we could, you could see those too. Um, and so many thanks, uh, amazing. Uh, we do have uh, Wendy Burkhart from High Desert is going to be doing a session for us on a starting a maker club um, at our conference. And I believe that's on when, uh, Tuesday morning. And she's sharing the ups and downs that they went through, but uh, having high school students or middle school students be part of creating these things really gives them an insight and into working with uh, exceptional exceptional learners so it's it's just a win-win and Judy I see it looks like you might be frozen again uh, Chandra if you want to uh, stop the recording uh, we will do that and I don't know if you can hear me now Judy uh,